Today, I want to talk to you about data visualization, how it is fundamentally important to understand our complex world, and also why I hate infographics, which in my opinion is the opposite, uh, the idiotic brother that has been closed uh, uh, in a room and it is unable to express its thoughts. The world that we see around us and the world that we build, of course, can be understood with our unaided senses to a certain degree. And the consequence of trying to understand the world with just the unaided senses is a severely limited kind of understanding where we cannot be surprised if uh, our aspirations, our desires, our opportunities are stilted, uh, if our lifespan is only a few years longer than our reproductive age, because that is what biology strives to achieve and nothing more. No more understanding the necessary, no more life than reproduction. However, we humans, supported and uh, propelled by technology, want more. And our sense-making of how the world is, our desire to arrive to actionable conclusions that improve our lives, can be greatly helped by the right kind of information gathering, analysis, and representation. So data visualization is, in my opinion, a fundamental tool that enables us new kinds of storytelling around the world. By itself, it will not be for some time at least the basis of automated decision making. Machines don't need the beauty and the synthetic ability of a beautiful data visualization to be convinced that the right choice is A rather than B. But for human consensus in a group to emerge, the profound impact of a right kind of data visualization can be huge. I will illustrate this with uh, several examples, but I am sure many, if not all of you, love maps. Geographical maps, of course, are uh, the most direct example of what I'm talking about to know where you are going and what are you going to meet uh, once you are there. Uh, the geographical explorations uh, of uh, five, six hundred years ago aimed to understand if there were indeed lions, hic sunt leones, in the unknown parts of the world, and in some areas there were lions, uh, and to fill out uh, not only the contours, but the inside of the of the continents. It is quite astonishing that certain maps of Africa uh, needed to be filled uh, around uh, the end of the 19th or the beginning of the 20th century, um, so close to our era where swarms of satellites are mapping the planet in real time or close to real time, and we have programmatic access to the data feed so that we can see things uh, in evolution all over the planet as shipping lanes uh, transport uh, our products, uh, as uh, we are burning or um, planting trees, uh, as uh, cities thrive uh, or shopping centers uh, become deserts because nobody is there, there are no cars in the parking lots, 
and we can actually count the number of cards, cars and plot their number on a chart to see what is going on. So the difference is, is, is really huge. Before listing other uh, examples, I also want to illustrate why I hate uh, infographics. By infographics, as opposed to data visualization, I mean the graphical representation of information mainly driven by marketing that pretends to give simple or simplified answers and expects or maybe even induces a distracted attitude where attention needs to be grabbed by flashy colors, silly uh, icons, and uh, a product which often purposefully hides granular data in flat, dead images and seldom or never gives access to the underlying data sources. Yes, it demonstrates effort, both in its creation and uh, in its consumption, as you need to dedicate time to decode what uh, is, is being uh, um, shown or, or what kind of story this marketing uh, person or, or company wants to, to tell you. But this investment is rather useless. The return uh, is not enhancing our productivity or, or decision making. So let's not invest our time in creating and spreading infographics. Let's invest our time in creating beautiful and useful data visualization platforms. These drive powerful multidimensional understanding. They lead to insight and, and action. And they support a dynamic exploration of what are the topics and, and what are the correlations of different kinds of uh, data streams, supporting hypotheses or falsifying them. Uh, one of the most famous examples uh, of data visualization is uh, from uh, the middle uh, of the 19th century when an epidemiologist, John Snow, uh, mapped the deaths on a, a geographical map of the city of London um, caused by a cholera outbreak. In a short period of time, hundreds of people died of cholera and uh, the, the people at the time were very unsure what were the, the causes of this, this odd outbreak. And the London cholera map was able to illustrate and substantiate the hypothesis that Jon Snow made at the time that the contamination of a water source of a given well was the reason of the outbreak because the deaths clustered around that area. And then, of course, with this powerful visualization, he was able to have others come to action, isolate the source of contamination and contain the epidemic. Another beautiful example, uh, also on the cover of uh, Edward uh, Tufte's uh, seminal book, The Quantitative Display of Visual Information, uh, is uh, from uh, the 1860s, where Charles Minard, or Charles maybe, Charles Minard, uh, illustrates the death toll of Napoleon's march on Moscow uh, in the winter of 1812, where uh, in an incredibly powerful multi-dimensional representation, he shows um, the distances uh, that uh, needed to be covered going towards east, the number 
um, comprising uh, the infantry, uh, shrinking rapidly as hundreds of thousands of people died because of additional dimension, the winter temperatures of minus 20, minus 30 uh, degrees Celsius that the, uh, um, the soldiers were unprepared to, to face and they couldn't survive. And then an ever shrinking number of soldiers going westward back uh, towards France. The modern equivalent of these powerful examples are data visualization platforms that are able to support incredibly impactful and powerful ways of crafting narratives and, and stories around the data and vividly illustrate their, their impact. A few years ago, uh, a, a beautiful TED talk brought uh, this uh, uh, to uh, many people's attention, where Hans Rosling, who now passed away, has shown Gapminder, uh, where he illustrated how life expectancy correlates uh, with uh, uh, the uh, income per head of nations across more than 200 nations and uh, over 200 years uh, with uh, bubbles showing uh, the um, income or rather probably GDP per head of the various nations uh, in, in growing sizes and um, the position of the bubbles uh, would, uh, would show the life expectancy. And uh, what is wonderful is that while he delivered this as a TED talk, he also made available the website Gapminder where people could go and play around with the data, highlight certain continents or an individual country, change the parameters of the visualization so that there would be a trail left uh, by the bubble as it would be moving uh, through the, the years, or change the meaning of the axis of uh, visualization rather than GDP and uh, uh, life expectancy, it could be child uh, mortality or literacy or many other things. Another project that is ongoing and extremely well crafted is Our World in Data. Our World in Data publishes incredibly well sourced uh, narratives around how uh, the world is through the data that we can measure and uh, that we illustrate through its charts of how the world is getting better contrary to too many times that we hear only about the negative things uh, happening uh, around us. And the charts of uh, our world in data can be embedded on other websites as well as there is the possibility of immediate access to the source um, tables of the charts as well as the original uh, URLs of the data sources that uh, comprise uh, the data behind the charts. I want to illustrate the power of data visualization supporting storytelling with an example that I believe could be one of the most important of our times. This appears as a chart on page 65 of the 2019 Stanford University uh, report on artificial intelligence. Uh, the um, 
about the technical performance of, of AI systems. And the chart has been also uh, analyzed by OpenAI on its blog. Now, the chart itself maps the uh, performance of uh, computer systems in support of artificial intelligence um, calculations, uh, typically in neural networks uh, and machine learning, deep learning applications in its logarithmic uh, y-axis and um, as usual or often uh, on the horizontal x-axis uh, we have time. And I often talk about exponential change, the accelerating rate of, of change. So those of you that uh, are accustomed to this kind of nar narrative know that on a logarithmic axis, an exponential curve is represented as a line. So you can see if um, a scatter of various data points, in this case represented by the power uh, of these computing platforms for AI applications over the course of, of many years, starting from the 60s, can be usefully interpolated with a line. And yes, indeed, it appears to be the case up until about eight years ago, up until 2012. And we have a name for the shape of that line. We call it Moore's Law because it allows the self-fulfilling prophecy of improving performance of our computers to be um, proven right by the engineers who all over the world, generation after generation, overcome the limitations of our technologies and deploy new ones in order to make better chips, better performing systems. However, it turns out that if we would have had AI applications supported by these computing systems tuned at their maximum performance according to Moore's law, the improvement over that period of time would have been of a sevenfold uh, increase in performance. Instead, as this is plotted on this chart, the improvement that we had and we achieved over the course of these past eight years corresponded to a 300,000-fold improvement. And what both the Stanford report and the OpenAI blog conclude simplistically is that this is due to a new kind of doubling that rather than occurring approximately every two years is now occurring every three, four months. And those of you who follow the context closely know that I have a different narrative, a different understanding of this chart and a different expectation of what further segments of the chart could look like because rather than simply talking about a previous rate of doubling and a new rate of doubling that are two data points on a new meta chart, what I talk about is an increasing rate of doubling, which of course corresponds to an increasing rate of acceleration that I call jolting. And so AI applications supported by improving computing systems are an example of jolting technologies whose increasing rate of acceleration is the characteristic of our time. We will talk about this more for sure as this chart potentially is one of the most important that you can study and try to understand and a beautiful example of data visualization.
the 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 storytelling is uh, is extremely uh, important but what is important is to understand that our stories if based on objective data about the world are ever more powerful because yes we have a, a tendency of enjoying um fictional tales or alternative histories we have um, uh, our need to be distracted and to be uh, entertained uh, by things that uh, don't necessarily have to do with uh, the world around us however if we want to improve the world if we want to improve the lives of our families our communities and and the human civilization then it is crucial to understand the difference what is a fairy tale what is uh, an impossibility and what is instead the objective reality that we see rooted in data beautifully represented powerfully narrated that can become the anchor of an aspiration of where we want to end up and hopefully a path to get there so that it is not just a dream but it is a call to action for many people to gather around and to pool our resources our talent our passion our ingenuity we are a rational species we are morally programmed to apply this rationality to the good of ourselves as individuals and of communities that with a deeper understanding of our interconnectedness today can comprise every individual on the planet so data visualization is a beautiful tool to support this emerging capacity of increased tolerance embracing the variety of ways of living on the planet while striving to improve the lives and the opportunities of all of us i hope that you will go and explore these platforms of data visualization that I have mentioned or point out others that you like and that you believe can uh, help. Obviously, data visualization is not only for analyzing the, the fate uh, and uh, the data underlying the lives of human civilization. It can be and is extremely useful for supporting analysis and narratives in a corporation an enterprise that wants to understand its clients uh, the product and service flows and it is an incredibly powerful tool in those environments as well and of course uh, we have been enjoying beautiful components of of data visualization and, and visual narratives since we were young whether they were maps of uh, uh, of of the world uh, that we would explore or uh, they were uh, maybe those wonderful books um, for example Richard Scarry and those uh, series of books uh, come into my mind this is something uh, that we intimately feel uh, is useful enjoyable and uh, I am sure that uh, uh, we will keep using it and enhance the tools that uh, allow us uh, to use it uh, for a long, long time. Thank you very much.